five psychological tips on how to increase your breath hold. That's what we are going to talk about today because people are always asking me, Gert, how, how can you do that? How can you hold your breath for several minutes? I mean, what about the contractions? Don't you, don't you feel uh, awkward? Don't you feel uh, any discomfort when these contractions come? Well, there are ways to deal with this. And in this video, we will talk about those ways. And yes, the title says it already. These are psychological tips and tricks because breath holding is all about controlling the mind. If you're new to this channel, well, you're not because you're watching a live stream. My name is Gert Leroy, helping you master freediving. So how are we going to start this? Five psychological tips. So the biggest problem with breath holding is always anticipation. The question even asking me, like, how do you deal with contractions is already anticipation. It shows you that, well, at a certain point in your breath holds, well, you're, you're already thinking about what's going to happen. So that is perfectly normal. It's human. I mean, we all do that. But there are ways to um, minimize this or to at least focus more on the first part of the breath hold so you can actually extend that phase. So breath holding is not all about, oh, the contractions, how am I going to deal with this? No, it's about being in the zone. So maybe you have less contractions or later contractions. And then when eventually those contractions come, there are ways to deal with this. So a breath hold can be divided into, um, let's say, two stages. You take your final breath and then the first part of the breath hold starts, which we call the relaxation phase. The relaxation phase is the phase of the breath hold that we all enjoy the most because we don't have those contractions yet. So let's talk about this first. Dealing with contractions is one thing, but how do you deal with this phase of the breath hold before the contractions? Don't you wanna be this as smooth as possible? Of course. Don't you wanna be this relaxation phase as long, as extended as possible? Of course. So how can we do this? Well, there are a couple of mental tips and the first one is going to your happy place or going to happy memories. So this is all about visualization. So when you're holding your breath, you don't, you are not really doing anything. When I made a comparison with diving, you can focus on your technique. For instance, when you're doing no fins, you can focus on the no fins technique. And only focusing on your diving technique can already take your less pleasant thoughts a way to focus on that technique but in static apnea in just normal breath holding we do not swim we do not move our body we don't have anything to focus on and that makes static breath holding such a difficult discipline so what are we going to focus on well some mental tricks here the first one happy place try to go to a place that you consider as happy that might be a place from your childhood, or it might be something that happened only yesterday. That's up to you to decide. I want you to think about this, not during the breath hold, but before. So before you do your breath hold, the day before, or a week before, right now, just think about what situations that you could possibly think of in a breath hold that would make you feel more comfortable, that would make you feel more happy. So. I experimented with a couple of them. And one of those happy places is when I think about my childhood, when I was a young um, boy playing in the streets uh, where I grew up, in the village where I grew up. And I had a friend in my street and we used to dress up as soldiers <laughs> because my dad and his dad, we they had to do service and uh, they still had their army clothes, soldier clothes. So we liked to dress up in those clothes and walk through the village and pretend we were in the army. So when I think about this, it's it's fun. It's 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 nice. Um, if for some reason this would, this kind of particular example that I'm giving you now, if this would distract you too much because of all the problems that are going on in the world right now in the war in Russia and, and Ukraine, maybe this might not be the best possible thing to think about. Then you can easily switch to something else. Um, for instance, yesterday you had a slice of cake, whatever cake that might be. You went to a coffee place, you just enjoy that coffee so much, and then you had a cake, a uh, Boston slice cake, whatever. And um, why am I giving that example? I think when I was in Panglao, I used to eat, I think it was called Boston slice cake, but you get the picture, right? You get the idea. You think about something that you ate and the taste was so good and you relive. You relive all these sensations. That is going to your happy place or memories. 
So you keep your mind occupied with this and try to go into details. For instance, when I think about me being a young boy walking around in my village, I try to remember the details in the streets, the houses. I literally visualize those houses and try to uh, remember who was living there. Was there a friend of mine living there? Did they have a dog? Uh, did I go into this house maybe? Did, did they invite me? So there's many details I try to remember. The more details you go over in your head, the less room there is, the less space there is for less pleasant thoughts to think about. That is a happy place. What else can we do? Uh, the body scan. If for some reason these happy places wouldn't work, uh, too well for you or if it would work in the beginning of your breath hold, but then suddenly you feel like yeah I don't like to think about this anymore then you can switch so it's not like this that during a breath hold you can only use one mental trick no you can jump from one trick to another if that would be uh, necessary so the body scan I've talked about this in other videos comes down to getting rid of the tension out of each body part so um, you visualize each single body part you can start with your hands and then you visualize that the tension is going out. Like you literally see the tension. It's a little mental trick, right? You literally see the tension getting out of your hands. And you can help by just moving your hand a little bit. Then your wrists. Visualize the tension getting out of your wrist. Then you go towards your elbow. You don't have to touch your elbow or anything. Just think about your elbow. Okay, tension. I visualize, I see the tension getting out of my elbow. Then towards the shoulder, you might try to shrug off the tension a bit and then visualize the tension getting out of your shoulder. And then when one arm is done, you go towards the other shoulder, elbow, wrist, hands, fingers. When that is done, you can go towards your chest, visualize the tension getting out of your chest and you go towards your belly, which is very important in breath holding. Make sure your belly is relaxed. Relax your diaphragm. Don't Tensen this abdominal region up. Just relax the belly. Then go towards your hip, your upper legs, your knees, your calves, ankles, feet, toes. And then when almost the whole body is done, you go towards the head. You start with the neck. Get the tension out. Visualize tension getting out. Then this part, very, very important. You want your jaw to be relaxed. You want your tongue to be relaxed so you can... Move your tongue around to find the best possible position. Let your tongue rest in your mouth and visualize tension getting out of your nose. You might think it's a bit weird because how could I have tension in my nose? But just visualize it. Pay attention to your nose, tension getting out, your ears, your eyes. There might be tension here, your forehead, every body part. And when you take time to do this, I can guarantee you, time will just pass by without you even noticing it that is the body scam what else can we do we can play a song or a mantra a mantra is just one little phrase that we keep on repeating over and over songs um i suggest you come up with a song before you start your breath holds i like to sing the song of uh, mike posner i took a pill in ibiza to show a vg i was cool when i finally got sober i felt 10 years older and fuck it it had something to do na -na 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 -na. But when I tried that the first time, I liked it, but I also thought, wow, it's a little too much for me to remember all the words, the lyrics of this song. So I tried something else. I switched from the uh, verse towards the chorus. And the chorus is, all I know are sad songs, sad songs. And I kept on repeating that one sentence over and over and over again. And it became a mantra. So quickly, the playing of the song transferred into um, a mantra. So you can try that. Um, or, and this is something that I actually like a lot, expressing gratitude. Now, how can expressing gratitude help you in holding your breath longer? Well, when you're in this relaxation phase and um, you're holding your breath and you want just to focus on nothing, actually, why don't you try telling yourself and the world and the universe how grateful you are for the life you have. You might not wake up tomorrow. I mean, I don't want to be uh, negative here or uh, scare you, but hey, death comes upon us at a certain moment in our lives, right? It happens to all of us. 
we're not gonna live forever so at some point we're gonna die why don't we be grateful for every day that we live so when you're doing your breath hold and you're laying down on your beds or you're in the water doing wet static apnea face submerged why don't you keep on telling yourself i am thankful for what i have i'm grateful for the life i have i'm grateful for the friends i have i'm grateful for the job i'm doing or for, even for just free diving or i'm grateful for holding my breath right now expressing gratitude expressing gratitude will make you happy it will give you a smile because then you will realize how wonderful life actually is so you can give that a try but then eventually at some point well you guess it already right the relaxation phase will go over into the uh, contractions uh, phase and this is the phase of the breath hold that uh, most people struggle with so how you do you deal with contractions well first of all and this might come as a big surprise uh, to you be happy about it be happy that your contractions are there be happy that you felt that first contraction now how can you be happy about feeling a contraction well you're doing a breath hold right you're, you want to you want to hold your breath now we don't want to talk about time because breath holding is more about an internal process but well at the end of the day you're going to look at your clock and you're going to want to know how long you held your breath so when this contraction comes it's like a benchmark it's like a moment in your breath holds that you are certain of everything that happened before you're not really certain of you're just visualizing you're doing the body scan you're thinking about the happy place but those are tricks those are tricks to extend the relaxation phase when this first contraction comes that is the first moment in your breath hold that you truly know all right it's real it's real this is the contraction so when my first contraction comes in a breath hold i embrace it i do not create negative emotions towards it like oh my god no there is a contraction no i do exactly the opposite and it's not like i'm tricking myself into doing that i am actually truly happy that the contraction came because and this might again be a bit weird but you don't want to hold your breath forever right i mean if you could so when this first contraction comes you know you know that your breath hold at some point is going to end and you have something to focus on okay first contraction is here now from now on I'm not going to do these visualization techniques anymore, body scan, uh, singing a song. Not going to do that anymore. All of that, not necessary anymore. First contraction is here. From now on, I'm just going to deal with the contractions. I'm going to let them happen, which at some point, from a psychological point of view, it's even easier than the first part of the breath hold. So how are we going to deal with contractions? You're going to give yourself positive affirmations positive affirmations might be very close to um repeating a, a sentence like a mantra but the difference here is that you're going to be really positive about it so which kind of positive affirmations can you give yourself you can keep on repeating little sentences like three words maximum four like i am strong so when my contractions start coming up more frequently and more heavily I keep on repeating this little sentence, I am strong, I am strong, I am strong, I am strong. Over and over again, I am strong. Contractions start building up, I am strong. Or I am confident, I am confident, I am confident. Or I am powerful, I am power. Remember, positive affirmations, right? So when you tell yourself, I am powerful, guess what? You are powerful. I am powerful. I am powerful. Meanwhile, contractions, contractions getting heavier. I am powerful. My personal um, uh, positive affirmation that works best and that I like to repeat um, better is I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. I even sometimes say this when uh, things get a, more, a bit more difficult in a deep dive. I can do this. I can do this. And, and when contractions are becoming heavier and heavier and heavier, and you know that your breath hold is really coming to an end, I keep on repeating this even more to a certain extent that I kind of completely go up in this positive affirmation. It's like I'm playing a game of how many times can I say I can do this to myself while these contractions are getting 
heavier and heavier. I can do this. I can do this. Hey, breath holding is uh, is um, quite something uh, something extraordinary, right? This is not for the average Joe, you know. So you have to put in some effort. You have to put in put in some um, some work, and um, you need time. You need to give yourself time to get used to this and to feel comfortable doing this. Because I understand for a beginner, these positive affirmations might be sometimes difficult. I mean, you might have some mental barriers. Uh, against this, like, no, 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 I, I'm not going to do that. So I can understand that. I mean, this is a process that you need to go through. So let's see who is in um, the comments. Mo says, um, I live in uh, New Hampshire. Uh, I was in Panglao in March, planning another trip next month to Panglao, Malboal and Mati. So um, I will be in uh, Panglao probably somewhere March, maybe April, late March or April. Um, Malboal I've never been to, but uh, Mati, of course, uh, you've seen my videos in the Puhala Bay, uh, Davao Oriental, um, the region of Mindanao in the Philippines. Absolutely fantastic place. Uh, very friendly people. Uh, it's a place, a uh, kind of region in the Philippines that is less discovered, but the local government wants to uh, promote tourism there. Then we have... Um, uh, La or L.A. the girl. I like to listen to music when I'm going to my diving spots. I put on um, my favorite songs on repeat. By the time I'm diving, the song is simply playing in my head. Works for me when line diving. Yes, absolutely. Playing a song until uh, you know that song, uh, you know every word of it. Uh, you even know um, the, the beats per minute of the song. So when you sing the song, you know that song so well that the speed in which you are singing it uh, is the same or almost the same as the actual song. So you know, you can actually know how long you're in your breath holds. For some reason, um, statics are the hardest for me. Absolutely, I get so stressed during them. So, yeah, static apnea is considered one of the, or maybe the most difficult uh, discipline because it is just pure mental. So that's why we have all these mental tricks. Love it. I'll try the positive uh, affirmations. Yes, and let us know in the comments uh, later on how that uh, felt. Uh, Mo says, I would like to meet the Bajau tribe and the Imam in Puhada. Uh, absolutely. So um, uh, Imam Eldio Gulisan, uh, he's, um, he's a priest and imam of the Muslim community in um, Davao, uh, Davao City. So um, you could, uh, if that would be one of your interests, you could actually meet him in the city. So be besides diving, you can also meet him there and see what, what he's doing in his real life and how he um how he uh, is a manager or an imam or, or a spokesperson for his local uh, community peace in every breath